Southwest New Brunswick. As many of you know, the Premier has called a state of emergency for the province today. I'm here with Mayor Doug Nash of the Town of St. Andrews to find out how this affects us on a municipal level. Thank you for being here, Doug. Oh, you're very welcome. Glad to have the opportunity to speak to the community. Yes, this changes and, and heightens the things that we have been saying as, as late as last night uh, uh, on CHCO TV. It's now much less of a voluntary situation and we have much more of a compulsory situation now that the Premier has declared a state of emergency. What it means is while we were encouraging and we still encourage everyone to self-isolate who's been traveling and who are uh, back in the province, uh, now it's a provincial requirement that can be mandated by the Provincial Department of Health and uh, you know so you must do it it's uh, it's it's uh, it's not voluntary it's uh, it's compulsory by legislation and so uh, we want everyone to do that and to help people who are going to do that what we have put in place in this town thanks to the collaboration of many people but certainly coordinated by the staff of our town is we put in a support system so that we have, I think, m m mounting, but almost 50 volunteers now that have pledged their services through the collaboration, primarily with the Kiwanis Club at this point, uh, to actually go out and run and get groceries and get drugs and get other things that people who are in isolation need. Because the whole purpose of isolation is to be isolated, not to have to go out to get groceries. It defeats the whole purpose. And even if you are isolated with other family members, one person can go out and do a few things, but you still have to, you know, the socially distance yourself from other people. So walking your dog on the beach when there's nobody else around is fine, but going to the grocery store or hanging out in a restaurant or uh, worse, going out of town to, uh, to superstore or something is just not on. Almost everything that we need is going to be available to us in our town. And, uh, you know, clearly the federal government just the day before that has told people that you cannot or will not be able to, after the next 24 hours likely, be able to cross the border either way and that you're, except for very essential things, which, which is as yet to be defined by the federal government. But grocery shopping in, in Calus is not an essential thing. I was in the... Uh, Joey's Independent first thing this morning at uh, 7 o'clock and the seniors early opening and uh, yes there were some bare spots on the shelves which I understand were filled by noon hour when trucks came in. There is no shortage of supplies in St. Andrews at the moment. Please use our, you know, don't go very far and if you can't go or if you feel vulnerable please call the town office 529-5120 or access us through our website or through Facebook and someone will respond and we'll match you up with a volunteer that can help you get what you need. But it's absolutely essential that you self-isolate if you are in one of those high-risk situations ha having come back from the United States or having come back from Europe or other points of destination in the world. So, so please, please, it's, this is not a drill, it's, it's the very serious nature. People are dying in great numbers all around the world. We're lucky so far here, but if we don't flat, flatten the curve by distancing ourselves and slowing down the spread of this virus, we will be faced with the same kind of dilemma. Now, we've heard a few wonderful stories today in town of snowbirds coming home, flying home, and having neighbors coordinate dropping off a car and keys at the airport so that they can stay isolated on their return home. Um, what other measures do you think people should take or would you encourage? Actually, I think that raises a very good point. There may well be some people who are away at the moment planning on coming back and really don't have the same up-to-date information that we have here in the community. So for, I would just say to their family and friends that are anticipating having them come home, by all means, be in contact with them and keep them up-to-date on what's required so that when they get home, they get to the airport, they've made some sort of a plan that's not going to have them put anyone at risk trying to get from the airport back to home, right? So they're, they're, everybody has to have a plan, a personal safety plan that works for them and works for the community. So that, that's a very good point and I know that's been a bit of a gap between airports and home is something that you may think you the end of the journey is when you get off the plane. That's not the end of the journey mm -hmm. and you may be putting unwittingly, unwittingly people at, at risk. 
Can we speak a little bit to, uh, there is obviously a little bit of fear in the community. Do we have any cases in town? What can you speak to in, in that regard? I know that um, the government has issued um, in the state of emergency that they will let us know if we have clusters that are not travel related. Where are we right now with, with that relationship with what well, they're telling us? As I understand it, as of today, we're not beyond the level of uh, uh, risk where we need to tell people about clusters in their own communities. Right now, we're still respecting the privacy of individuals. Uh, there are four regions from a healthcare agency point of view, and so the only pinpointing that's being done is where the cases are by region. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that, for lots of reasons, is the appropriate thing to do. Mm -hmm. However, if we start to see significant community transmission of the virus, mm -hmm. then that will take up the level of, of the risk greatly, and then they may issue those directives and be able to start pinpointing where people are, especially if there are a large number of cases in a small area. Mm -hmm. That hasn't happened yet, mm -hmm. and what the people should take from that is that the risk is still at a moderate right. level here in our area, and uh, we, will, we will be told if it changes, and let's hope that by our own behavior, we can keep it from changing mm -hmm. by, uh, by flattening, as they say, flattening the curve and slowing down the transmission uh, within our region of the disease and throughout the province. So I guess a good piece of advice would be to act as if there was a case in town, even right. if, if we don't know. Well, no, because you don't know. You still mm -hmm. don't know w whether there are, so you should proceed with caution and, and do everything that's required, uh, hand washing, distancing, social distancing, and uh, all of the other measures that will help and we've got an enormous amount of information uh, all through the, uh, the media have been telling us every day what we can do and the, the, a lot of the information is very consistent so it's repetitive and hopefully anyone who watches television uh, or goes online for more than an hour will be bombarded with the same information we just have to get it and do it because it's sound information. Mm -hmm. Are there any other precautions you'd like to highlight for people at home that maybe we didn't think of a few days ago but are, are now taking? I think really one of the things, it's not really a precaution, but it's something that people can get carried away with. We're lucky here, but I know in some places people are stocking up and hoarding, mm -hmm. which is the worst thing that we can do. The suppliers tell us that there's lots of food, but there won't be lots of, and the only danger is hoarding. Mm -hmm. Not the actual supply chain can feed everybody reasonably. And now there should be no excuse for that, as I just indicated, now that we have our volunteer cadre in the, in the community available to go out and do your shopping for you, uh, mm -hmm. we'll be able to hopefully slow that down. But that, that's, that, that's a precaution of a sense, more of a, a community precaution to make sure that we don't end up with uh, shortages that can't be uh, filled. I know some of the volunteers today were doing a course in safety just mm -hmm. so that we can get yeah. deliveries to people taking the necessary precautions. Is there any more you can say to that just so people feel safe when they are using these services? Yeah, absolutely. The, the, these services have, were put in place quickly but they were also put in place carefully so that all of those necessary precautions have been taking place. So the person who brings your groceries or your, or your uh, pharmaceuticals to the house is not going to barge into the middle of your house and perhaps compromise your situation. They're going to come, they're going to call ahead, you're going to know when they arrive, they're going to put the uh, supplies outside of your door and they're going to wait to make sure that you get them and take them inside but there won't be any compromise they'll wear gloves they'll do all of that stuff has been worked out all right well yeah. let's continue to call each other and check in keep a safe distance um, and i thank you so much for sitting down with me today and yeah. anytime you'd like to come back to talk sure. to the people at home we can That's do that great. The only last thing, if I, if you don't sure. mind, that I would say is that uh, I've heard some rumors around the community of people who are angry about uh, about they, seemingly seeing people that they think should have quarantined themselves and that they should be quarantined, and uh, we don't want this to happen. But if anybody in the community uh, has facts 
Mm -hmm. Not supposition and not rumor, but facts that someone who may well be at risk and is out in the community, that should be reported to town hall and we will follow up and determine mm -hmm. whether or not some action should be taken. But we don't want to end up in a situation where people in the community are self-appointing themselves right. to take care of that kind of a problem and thereby they're becoming part of the problem not part of the solution. Right. So everybody should be part of the solution in this matter. And I will say I call the town office multiple times a day just to keep in touch and you always answer the phone, you're <laughs> always quick and if you don't have an answer you get it to me. So thank you for that. Terrific. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. A news and public affairs production of CHCO-TV, New Brunswick's only source for independent community television.